You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. A professional motivational speaker, Nancy can help you overcome obstacles and start living full out. Call in with questions live at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. And now, here's Nancy. Hello, welcome to the Living Full Out Show. I am Nancy Soleri. Very excited to be here with you today. We are going to be talking about taking control in your life. Now, keep in mind, some things we have control over and some things we don't. It's kind of finding that happy medium between the two because living full out means that we tenaciously go after what we want in life, but also being realistic with sometimes needing to find resources or get support to get to where we want to go or to over overcome a challenge. And so throughout the entire show, our focus today will be on how you can take control in your life over things that you absolutely can do. And we have a very inspirational guest coming up shortly here, and uh, we're going to be telling, her, her, telling you about her story shortly. But keep in mind, if you want to hear today's show again, go to livingfullout.com, click on the radio show tab, and then click on the speaker button. You'll be able to hear this show and all of our episodes again and again because there's a lot of great information that sometimes we just don't take in the first time. You want to hear it a second time or a third time. Also, if you have questions about today's show, or if you have an inspirational story that you feel our audience would benefit from hearing, reach out to us at connect at livingfullout.com. Again, that's connect at livingfullout.com. We'd love to hear from you and be able to answer those questions that you may have. So our guest today, Christine Greer, she overcame ovarian cancer. I mean, cancer is such a scary word for so many, but to talk to somebody who's a survivor, who lived through it, it's an amazing, touching story. And uh, she went on to start a foundation called Charlene's Light. She'll tell us about that as well. So I'd very much like to jump on in and welcome our inspirational guest today, Christine Greer. Hi, Christine. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me on. Yes. Oh, my gosh. You, for everybody, just so you know, Christine is like the nicest person ever. Now, I'm not saying that cancer takes mean people, but you are like super nice. So I want to go back to when you were 41 and yes. you, you, your doctor notified you of, of a bump. It all starts with a bump, right? What, what happened that day? Okay. Well, um, I actually went into the doctor for an annual exam. I had no symptoms, no reason to believe that I would hear anything concerning. And upon examination, my doctor said, you know, I feel something in your abdomen. I don't know exactly what we're dealing with. Let's do a, an internal ultrasound called a transvaginal ultrasound and see what this is. It turned out to be an ovarian cyst about the size of a grapefruit. And she said to me, hey, don't worry about it. It's just a simple fluid-filled cyst. Um, it should probably go away in 30 days or so. It'll change. So, it, you know, it'll disappear. So come back in a month and let's redo the test. So, I, you know, I left that day and I thought, well, that's strange. I don't even feel like I have a, a lump. Um, went back 30 days later, had the test repeated, went home. And that's when I heard um, a message on my phone recorder. It said, you know, call me immediately. I need to speak to you. Well, my heart about stopped. <laughs> yeah, no, no one likes that word immediately. That's not good. <laughs> no, exactly. And that's basically uh, when my cancer journey began. I feel like, um, you know, it was that warm summer day, that phone message from my gynecologist. She brought news to me that I'd have to begin a courageous journey. So I was up against ovarian cancer. In that 30 days, my cyst changed and it grew and it became the size of a, of a football. On the ultrasound, it showed some, uh, you know, the outside cell structure had changed. It was very concerning. So she said, we need to do uh, surgery right away. The problem was I have a very rare disease called mastocytosis. And anesthesia being put under is very risky for me. So, you know, I froze. I thought, what do I do now? So we consulted with my rare disease specialist at Mayo Clinic, and we decided together that it was too risky to put me under for major surgery. Um, I ended up with a spinal to numb me, and 
uh, we proceeded with the surgery, and it was a, you know, pretty lengthy surgery, very involved. It was a full hysterectomy. Um, I was completely awake. Now, I'm just curious, Christine. Uh, I'm just curious, before we go on to your story, you find out you have ovarian cancer. Gulp. Now you got to do this hysterectomy. Gulp, gulp. Like, how did you... How did you stay positive during this time? How did you stay hopeful? Because for those who are getting that news today, unfortunately, they may get it tomorrow. How do they stay hopeful? Well, that's a great question. Um, To start out with, I I tend to be a very positive person. But, you know, just go to old-fashioned power of positive thinking. But, you know, to be real here, that's scary news. That's terrifying news. And I really had to look within. How do I how do I do this? How do I make it through this journey and be okay again? Um, you know, I my clear definition of mental strength, you know, what is it? Um, I think, you know, you try to regulate your emotions, you try to act in a positive manner. Uh, manage your thoughts in a healthy way despite your circumstances, but I need to find the courage to live. Um, And I was scared. Did you allow yourself Uh, to cry when you needed to? Oh, yes. Okay. I certainly did. I accepted the support and love Mm -hmm. that was given to me. Um, I meditate. um, I prayed. I did a lot of guided imagery. And I also set my sights on the big picture. Okay, in two years, I can see myself bicycling. Or in five years, I'm going to be laughing with a group of friends. I wouldn't let myself go to that dark place too often. I need to live in the light. And I have to focus on the positive, And that's, that's how I have to operate um, Not that I'm not scared from time to time, but I can't cope if I'm terrified. It freezes me. Well, and I'm so glad that you were honest and sharing that with us because that is what people need to hear right now who are facing that. And, And I think it is important to visualize what your life looks like after the cancer because you don't want cancer mm-hmm. to take control of you. You need to tell it, okay, yeah. listen, you're going to have a couple months, maybe even a, even a year, but after that, be yeah. gone. You're no longer welcomed here. Now, Christine, I want you to stay with us. We have to go to a quick commercial break, um, but there's so much more to your story. And so everybody, you stay with us as well. And this is Christine Greer. We'll be right back. This is the Living Full Out Show. And uh, stay tuned. We'll be back. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. As a trusted life coach, Nancy will help you overcome setbacks and embrace all life has to offer. Call in with questions live at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. And now, here's Nancy. Welcome back to the Living Full Out Show. I am Nancy Soleri, and today we're talking about taking control of our life. Sometimes it's just spiraling out of control. Like, how do we... How do we get back on track? How do we feel whole again? How do we feel safe and secure and, and alive and feel as though we're going in the direction that we want? Well, that's what we're talking about today in many different forms. But we're going to jump right back into our our interview with our inspirational guest today, Christine Greer. She's sharing with us about her fight with ovarian cancer. She survived, but it came with lots of emotional pressure and stress and Fear. So I'd like to welcome Christine back to the show. Thank you. You got it. You know, I'd like to say that, you know, as we were talking about how do you do this, mm-hmm. um, you know, there are times in life when we need and we deserve a pity party. But I say to the women that I meet uh, struggling with ovarian cancer, you know, make it short. It can be harmful to stay at those pity parties too long. Um, You know, if I speak to women recently diagnosed, I suggest to them to take time and have their pity party, grieve, face those scary feelings, and feel sorry for yourself, but then move on and make a plan. You know what, I... At that party... Yeah, I love... 
I love that idea. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm a fan of crying. I hate to say that, but I am. I, I, I mean, I don't cry all the time, people. Just know that I'm, I'm stable. But I, I, I believe if you need to flush something out of your system, do it. If you need to call sounding boards right and left and complain, do it. But, like, I agree with you, Christine. Right. Give a time parameter around that. An hour, exactly. you know, a day. But don't let it be on and on and on because there's a life that's meant to be lived and we can't live it with a dark cloud of fear, depression, and so forth haunting us. Exactly. Um, so, so take us back here. So you're, you, you do the surgery. Unfortunately, you couldn't go under. You, you were awake for the entire right. experience, which everybody listening, I mean, nobody wants to be awake for a surgery. I mean, you're hearing everything they're doing. It's, it's, it can be kind of right. gruesome, actually, to it be was, awake. It was scary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, so, but you did. You got through the surgery, and your mm -hmm. mental state of mind at that point was, okay, Christine, you did it. You did it. They got the cancer. They took right. it out. Whew. Life is going to be good again. Yes, but it wasn't. That's what I. That's what I was hoping. So you know, four hours later, so I, I was wheeled into recovery, and my uh, surgeon, you know, waited with me as my husband was brought in, and she told us together that I had ovarian cancer, and I just kept thinking, okay, okay, I'm still here. I made it through the surgery, even though I went into anaphylaxis from. Uh, a drug that they were testing me for, for, you know, later for pain, but I'm still here. And I couldn't believe she just said those three dreaded words, you have cancer. You know, cancer is a very powerful word. And I used to see it as this big, giant word, all in capital letters. Well, not anymore. <laughs> um, I feel like I'm in control. And I don't give it that much credit anymore. It's not a big, giant neon sign in my life. I don't allow that. Uh, but that took a while to get to that point. Well, and on top uh, of that, you were told it was stage three, which, again, gulp, 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 right? right? Another, yes. another twist. So stage three, let's talk about that. What does that mean to be stage three ovarian cancer? What, what was the outlook for well, you? Sure. Well, I was mortified to learn that the prognosis for stage 3 ovarian cancer was ra rather dismal, to say the very least. Uh, you know, two days after my surgery, the surgeon walked in my room and stood by my bed and said, um, I have some bad news for you. It's stage 3. I was so ill-prepared for that. I, I was thinking it was perhaps a stage 1, maybe a stage 2, but... I didn't know a lot about ovarian cancer, but I knew that, ugh, stage three, that's mm -hmm. not good. Mm -hmm. She, I believe, was very um, nervous about presenting this information to me and, and, and left the room. I First, I said to her, by the way, dying isn't an option, so tell me where to go. Where would you send your mother, your sister, your daughter, because I need to live? And she said, maybe a teaching hospital and left the room, and my husband and I were just devastated. Not the best um, bedside manner, I would say. No, no, and and, and looking back now, I, I believe she just was upset too and didn't prepare herself. Mm -hmm. So now when I speak to medical schools about my experience, I'll tell them, you know, it must be gut-wrenching to give a patient hard news and bad news. It must be, but here's some suggestions for you. Yeah, you, you know, know, don't stand over the patient. Sit down. Be a kind, gentle human being. Perhaps touch them on the arm or the hand if you're both comfortable and remind them you're a team. You're going to work together. Be honest, be truthful, but be caring. And we should all be that way, really. Um, I exactly. want to make sure I want to make sure because we only have a limited time here in this interview. Unfortunately, and I could talk to you for hours. However, <laughs> uh, let's fast forward because you did survive. Yeah. But what was it? That allowed you to survive. Okay. Now I'm a 15 year survivor of stage three. Mm -hmm. We also know we didn't get it all. Um, there was some tissue remaining. There were malignant cells in the wash, which is what they do before they, you know, stitch it back up. Um, I was treated at Mayo Clinic. My type of ovarian cancer was extremely rare and 100% resistant to chemotherapy. So. It was very terrifying, and I had a wonderful GYN oncologist, and I said to her, 
okay, I'm going to have to figure this out. Uh, I, I know we're a team here, but I'm going to have to figure this out because I want to live. I love life. I have so much to live for, and I'm going to beat this cancer. Mm -hmm. And so um, we went home, and I I literally made a plan for myself and wrote it down. Okay, what are some things that I can do to get well again? Um, And I called it my ovarian cancer plan, and things such as, you know, eat organic it was Mm -hmm. diet it was exercise even though I was in good shape and I was pretty healthy eater I thought I could perhaps tweak things um I chose to not watch the news anymore I wanted to only be around positive people positive things so you started uh, to for a good solid year so you just so you just started to develop this kind of list of self care for yourself, exactly. And, and, and so did yeah. you not? So you didn't do chemo. Uh, chemo you did self care. I couldn't. You couldn't mm-hmm. do it, obviously. So because we have a little time here, so was it? Did it just go away? Was it just this miracle? Well, there's no evidence. I continue to go to Mayo Clinic for checkups because. Um, ovarian cancer has a very high recurrence rate Mm -hmm. of 70 to 90 percent of women with ovarian cancer it typically can come back Mm -hmm. and I thought wow my only option will be surgery I have got to really focus and concentrate on getting rid of this cancer I did a lot of guided imagery um, very positive thoughts a lot of prayer a lot of meditation Qigong uh, this is what worked for me. So and the sur- so each it was woman's journey is different, right? So it was the surgery that you did that get rid mm-hmm. of as much as I could, and that it was your positive right. energy, all the things on your list to do, and then that has what kind of it, that's what's kept it off, kept it away for I, these fifteen I years. So and I and I perhaps perhaps I have received a miracle, and I am so extremely grateful. You know, I do think gratitude is one of the most important, you know, foods for the soul. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, it has the ability to enhance our happiness and our well-being. So I am just so grateful. I truly don't take a moment for granted. Well, and what I think is so interesting, and this happens so oftentimes when we go through something, we channel that into purpose. And with right. that, you started Charlene's Light. And we just, you know, want to make sure we just get that in because it is such an important organization. What is Charlene's Light? Well, after I was diagnosed, a few years later, a friend of mine was also diagnosed with stage 3 ovarian cancer, my friend Charlene. And her journey with it was much shorter. It was very difficult. She um, never really experienced remission. She was going through lots of chemo, and it was very sad to see as, you know, this monster was taking her life. Mm. And the last six weeks of her life were spent at home, and I was so honored to be able to go over to her house and visit with her and, and chat with her. And one morning I thought, wow, you know, hey, God, give me some sign here. I have to do something about this. You know, I'm stage, I was stage three. I'm thriving, and here's dear Charlene, stage three, and she's dying. Mm. What can I do? And it was a light bulb moment. You know, start a nonprofit foundation. Take action. I went over to her house. I said, Charlene, I have this great idea. I want to put, you know, this into action here. I want to start a foundation. You and I had no idea what the symptoms were, um, what ovarian cancer was all about. If we didn't know, there's got to be thousands of women that don't know about this silent killer i want to start a foundation in your honor and, and you and and you and you did it <laughs> did and it. you did it you know it's I um it. we just have about one minute left um christine and i just want to say you know you took a scary situation you stayed positive you survived you created charlene's light and so you are such a great example of what it means to live full out and i really appreciate you being on the show today and letting us know how you took control of cancer and said get out of my body okay i got lots to live for so i i am so (laughs) grateful for you and thank you so much for being on our show today well thank you very much and i would just like to say you know all women please educate yourself about the symptoms of ovarian cancer they're very subtle 
you know, on that note, everybody go do that. It's, I know it's a Saturday, so go ahead and call on Monday, <laughs> but uh, get, get checked Please. out. So <laughs> thank you so much, Christine, and I appreciate you for being here, and uh, we will oh. be thinking of you always. Thank you very much, and you have a wonderful day. Thank you. So everybody, honestly, so many good messages in her story. But taking control, do you see how she didn't let cancer take over her life? She said, she put her foot down and said, no, cancer, get out of my body. She stayed positive. Whatever your challenge is, well, you have the ability to do that too. Today, you can do that. Positivity. Put it in action. Take control of your life to live full out. Now, when we come back, we're going to be taking your calls. Again, that number is 800-333-0001. And we're here for you to keep you motivated as you live full out. We'll be right back. To take control of your life takes intensity, it takes commitment and courage, but when you are able to realize what it is that you want most in your life, seek the resources, get the support, now you're no longer alone. Now you're able to take control. It may look different than you initially designed, but you're still going to get there. It's all about living full out on your terms. So start today by taking control over your life. Thank you so much for joining us today for this show. We're talking about taking control. And while that may seem like a heavy topic, it's one that we need. It's one that we have to consider because, again, some things in our life we can control. Some things we can't. we got to start there. And when it's the things that you cannot control, then you got to pray. you got to be positive. you got to think to yourself, I I I'm going to do what I can and just let the others other parts of that unfold. You can't constantly be hitting that brick wall demanding that something work out. You kind of got to go with the flow. That's part of living full out is being fluid, letting, letting things flow naturally. Now, exciting, the things you can control, that's when you put strategy in play. That's when you, you get the resources, you get the support that you need so you can achieve your goal. It may not be that you have all the answers, but let other people fill in the blanks. Again, that's why we're here each week. When you have a challenge, when you need to be empowered, let us help you fill in that blank with what you need so you can tenaciously step forward in achieving what you want. In fact, we're going to go back to the phone lines now and talk to one of our callers. Hello, welcome to the Living Full Out Show. Hi, uh, Nancy. Hi, thank you for joining us. Um, what's going on today? How can we help you? All right. I have a small dilemma with friends and family. Um, uh, everyone is settling down, having children, you know, getting married, which is great. I support that. But for some reason, I've never had that desire. But I keep getting pressured by family and friends and everyone around me to do it. And I don't know how it is I can just get them off my back. It doesn't matter how many times I explain it or what words I use. Mm -hmm. like, leave me alone. I yeah. know what I want to do in life. I'm passionate about my goals and careers. And it's very frustrating. You know what? I love that you brought up this question because – and I'm sure quite a few of our listeners are nodding their heads because it really depends which side of the fence you're on, right? Some people have a family, they're married, they, they have kids, and maybe that's what they wanted. Maybe it handed, happened unexpectedly, but that's the journey that they right. took. Others, maybe they've, they can't have kids. Maybe they haven't found that special someone. Maybe they're focused on their career. There could be a, a number of reasons. And it isn't that one is better than the other. It's just recognizing on both sides of that fence, there's positives and negatives. So here's what I'm thinking. Right. When you talk to your friends, or if this should come up again, I want you to guide the conversation this way. Start with that whole fence thing we just talked about, right? There's going <laughs> to be times where there, as a mother, as a father, uh, uh, you know, having a family, being married, there's positives and negatives. Let them talk about a couple positives and a couple negatives. The positives should be re rejoiced, yay, because you're happy for your friend that they're so happy. But some of the negatives say, you know what, I feel you. That is why I have chosen not to dot, dot, dot. You see that? Right, yeah. So it, it just depends. You know, it, why you choose to not take that route is completely up to you. But maybe there's reasons why you, you d haven't done that or don't want to do that. Maybe career's your focus, right? So maybe if your friend yeah. is, one of their cons is, I never have enough time for me or, 
you know, I really, I wish yeah. I could make more money. I, 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 I'm, I'm, you know, I'm tired of being home all the time. Okay, I hear you, and that is why I don't have kids. Dot, dot, dot. You see how right. that that correlates? Or somebody might yeah. say, oh, you know, my husband, he's my wife. Not, you know, negative, negative, negative comment. That's when you can say, see, that is why I haven't signed up for that. Do you see how you can make that? correlation it'll kind of nip in the bud that they're going to keep asking you about it but what will what it will do is pull them into your world a little bit more to understand why does that make sense yeah it does that that, that makes a lot of sense yeah because it can be exhausting to have to push people away don't don't ask that question don't ask that question i say you invite the question bring it right it's all about taking control of your life bring on the questions Bring on the concerns. Let me let me t- let me show you why I've chosen not to take that journey. Okay, so I think if you do yeah. that, it it'll it'll help and it'll be start a conversation. It'll develop a further deeper understanding and and even a even maybe make your relationship with your friends or family even more strengthened deeper. So, but I really appreciate you calling in. It was a wonderful question and. Uh, You know, we'll be thinking of you and and wishing you luck with those conversations. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You got it. Thank you for calling in. So what a great example, right? Here she is. She, she's taking control of her life. She's living her life the way she wants. Yet other people are pulling her, asking her, demanding of her to do things differently. Well, sometimes that happens in other aspects of our life. I mean, look at our inspirational guests, right? Christine was pulled and demanded by cancer, you know, but she said no. So when you are convicted about what you want in your life, when you're living on purpose, when you just feel like, hey, I, I'm happy, I, I love my life, then you just are, you don't even have to worry anymore about the haters or the people who are complaining or even the cancer that may be diagnosed in your body because you're then living your truth. It's important that today you step out there, confidently control your life. You are the captain of your ship. Don't ever forget that. I want to thank everybody who listened today, especially our Living Full Out family here who puts the show together. We have Mindy and Rich and Carrie and Debbie and everybody in the studio who's dedicated to helping you live your life full out. We will see you next week. And again, I believe in you. Confidently go out there, take control of your life and all about living full out. See you next week.